if Europeans land their warships on the coast of Africa today and declare slavery, what can we do to stop it? The governor, why when they enter speed, it say, I husband has stolen three hundred million to go and we sign the contract as well. Jesus has the name Kuti is a Nigerian household. Although the name rings well with Falakuti himself, his offsprings, like none other than Shen Kuti, personify the senior Kuti the most. He is not known to be politically correct. In fact, he fits Nigerians, even public figures, with doses of political incorrectness. The truth. Olusheru Anikula Kuti, born in Lagos on the 11th of January 1983, is the youngest of Fela Senior's children. His style of music is identical. It plays the drum like the quintessential Fela style. Shown as he's mostly called, is a gifted musician and a saxophonist who is also academically sound. The bubble of Afrobeat artists who can barely string together a sentence in proper English are no match for Shown. It is imperative to stamp as a statement of fact that Sherwin's presence with Bantu Pint is as a result of his distinct personality void of his father's. Born in Fela, influenced by Fela, but grown into an individual whose genre of music reflects the contemporary Nigerian society and Africa at large. <laughs> If Fela Senior were to be alive, I am certain that he would be the proudest of Sharon's part. Sharon has shown that he is an independent talent, albeit born in a home where talent sprouts. We invited Sharon today to indulge us on two very important topics that Nigerians, all black people in the diaspora, have always faced directly, indirectly, and even passively, racism. Sharon arguably makes the case for reincarnation. If Fela be born, he does not seek to please. He creates authentic and artistic music, the only way known to a proper Fela and Nicola Pukusi. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Olu Sharon and Nicola Pukusi. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, boss. For um, I hope I, I did better with that. You did better after our years. Okay, so I I, I intend to <laughs> actually. So um, um, like I said, we'll be discussing about racism and the skin white women in Africa. Now, black people are different from every other race. We're, we're different. We're probably the outliers in every other race, mostly because of the texture of our hair and then the color of our skin. I mean, of course, there are dark skinned people in Asia, Papua New Guinea, and yeah. other parts of. Um, well, they are all of our cousins. So yeah. Everybody came from Africa. Right. right. But, but they look very different. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they look nothing like us. Now, we've been tossed around for centuries. First, by the Arabs who came here um, to buy slaves. And then the white Europeans came. And you know, they made this place a free for all restaurant for anybody to just come and pick resources and eat. But despite these challenges, I mean, even when slavery started, they now came um, in the form of colonialism. And even after colonialism, the combat has been colonialist. And um, even with these negative experiences, like black people are not racist. If you see a black person who is a racist, it's probably reverse racism. So um, uh, my first question to you is, why are black people not racist? Uh, first of all, you know, <laughs> I think I don't want to feel that African people don't have the capacity. That we're some kind of special beings that we don't have the capacity for such immense yes, hate. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Because I see the violence in my continent, and I know that you know uh, we can only some hate in Africa as well. Sure, sure. Even though it's, it's internalized, and it is internalized for a reason, and that reason, reason is actually racism and imperialism. Now. Many people call me as well a racist. Interesting. Because I criticize the European worldview and criticize European government and the societies, you mm -hmm. know. And I tie directly probably 99.9% of African problems to the coattails of Europeans. 99%. Isn't 99.9%. It, isn't, isn't that a staggering figure when you consider the fact that we also have a role to play in our own issues? I mean, 
No, we are like people who deserve treaters. I mean, it is part of our characteristics as human beings to betray. Okay. So Africans be complete human beings, but are betrayers. You know, the only issue we have here is that we probably believe too much in our betrayers. Or we are too ignorant to see them as, as traitors and betrayers, you know. You know, but other than that, even the Africans that are ninety-nine percent of the Africans that are destroying Africa are doing it in service of, of the Europeans. Okay. There's an interesting book written by one of Africa's greatest children, Dr. Amos Wilson, okay. you know, he's from one of our colleagues in America. They call it, as they call them, African Americans. African Americans. You know, and this African, he wrote a book called Black on Black Violence, a psychoanalysis of black annihilation in service of white domination. Even if you can, and he was talking about crime in America. Crime in America, yeah. But I read the book and I could superimpose it on a situation in Nigeria and it fits. Directly, if you look at the, at the blood and the creeps, those gangsters, black gangsters in America are our politicians. Right. If you look at it from that aspect, it makes complete sense how society is run as well. Okay. So African people are under immense pressure, immense violence. Uh, but to say that we are racist, just because we refuse to accept European domination is wrong. Why? And then, secondly, and this is the most important, is that black people all over the world do not have the capacity to be racist. It I is mean, impossible when, when, when for you say, any black man in this world to be racist. racist. When you say, um, first of all, um, as a result of your analysis, right, I have two questions. First of all, you said that the black um, leaders or the gangsters who perpetrate black on black oppression are doing it in service of the white, um, of the of, of the European colonialists. It's a point that I've also observed. But then going forward, what do you think? Like, do you feel they have? What will it take them to understand? Because um, personally, I it's an opinion that I share, opinion that I share, which can be quite controversial. I tell I tell people that it will take a lot. More than enough, even for the masses to be able to do anything different. That the ability to change any society sometimes lie a bulk of it lies with the elite. The day the elite stand up and Not say, the bulk of it, all of it, really. yes, the because the day the elite stand up and say, We are done serving these people, that is the day our you know our place will start getting good. So, what do you think it will take for them to get to that point? Actually, on this note, I will go with the analysis of. One of our great allies in the struggle, okay. Dr. Paulo Ferrer, who wrote the Pedagogy of the Oppressed. And in there, he says adamantly that nobody benefiting from oppression I ever stand up against oppression. That the oppressed, so he treats the new politics. I, for one, agree that why Africa is so bad, because our elites are the only group of elites all over the world, they are not elites like our elites, who are in complete service to outsiders. To outsiders. Every other region you go in this world, even though there are some of them that are service to yes, outsiders, yes, there are always some that are committed, committed to, to their nation. Of their Nigeria, Africa, we have none of these people at the top. These ones, these criminals, they succeeded in annihilating, executing, exiling, destroying, silencing any other competition in their own group, yeah. through military coups. That's what I thought that Europe and America did experience that kind of cleansing. Of in class warfare. Military coup, coup is a kind of class warfare where they talk, you know. So in Nigeria, a certain group of Nigerians have been able to use the military effectively to and clear out the board, yes. you know, and impose themselves. Some of them military, some of them in, uh, businessmen. It's just impose themselves. different arms of the same people. Exactly. Yeah. On, so, on Africa. Coming back to your assertion on the fact that black people do not have the capacity. No, no, let me finish this point. Okay. So, Carlos Ferrer, and I believe that this is possible, definitely. Because we are educated okay. as a people to enjoy oppression. Mm -hmm. We are also oppressors in waiting. Uh, I think all Nigerians should read the pedagogy of the oppressed. And the one that can't read it, those that have read it should explain it to them. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. I mean, not being able to read is not anything bad. I mean, our, our government have not invested in the literacy of our people. You understand? So, 
people that cannot are just victims of the kind of nation that we are in. Nothing to be ashamed of, really. You know, many billionaires in Nigeria cannot read really neither. Trust me, you'll be surprised. Even when they do interview, they can tell by the way they put sentences to them as a yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there's no real education there. Yeah, yeah. Or at least there's no real Western education here. Yeah. 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 You know, we have to understand that we have the capacity to create something new as a people in this world, to build something outside of those that think they own everything, yeah. to organize as a people outside of those that benefit from our oppression. Yeah. And this is where our education comes into play. That's educated us to all the oppressors in waiting. You know, we've gone through this, their school systems, nothing but the way for the elites to put their spirit inside of you because you're educated by the elite yes. and the society. Yes. You know, Paulo Ferrer did a good job opening this uh, phenomenon because uh, we understand how we oppressed people also act like oppressors to, to, to other people, people who were higher. Than that. Yeah. So you understand that, and now that helps you to now start readjusting your mindset. Your mindset. Okay. You are aligning yourself with your people instead of those at the top. That's the problem in Nigeria that most of the professionals mm. think they should be allies of the elite, of the elite. instead of allies to the people. So bankers are there laundering money, teachers are there corrupting education, police are there taking bribe, all your people are there of is, is, you know, is, uh, is that uh, journalists are there taking bribe, right. lawyers are there aligning injustice, judges for now, uh, making unjust uh, pronoun to. The professionals are in allegiance with oppression because of the education we have. That, that so we have to educate ourselves. If we say we want a better nation, we must understand that your education is the core of the uh, things you need to do to get a better to nation. To get a better nation, like to enlighten the mind. Well, the education that you're talking about, I will come to that. Now, um, on your assertion about um, black people not being able to be racist, I want you to make us understand. Um, we had a, a brief discussion about that before we came. So I want you to make us understand for the um, benefit of the people watching. Okay. Why you think black people do not have the ability to be racist? Is it because they, they have the ability, but the capacity? The capacity. Yeah. Okay. We lack we lack the facilities, fam. <laughs> and they say in the UK. <laughs> okay. So we, you think we do not have the capacity to be racist? Yeah. Um, capacity in what way? Can you break that? But down? When you say racism, you okay. know, so you must understand. If you open your dictionary, easy. Yeah. That easy means something. Yes. Capital easy, social easy, community. You see, easy here means something. It means power. Okay. Race is a race power. So it is a power that there is a power dynamic tied to racism that black people just do not possess. So yes, as a black person, you can be prejudiced. Yes, against whites, possibly. You might even hate them. I agree. But I don't believe that you have the ability, the capacity to be racist towards a person. No matter what you feel towards a white man, you cannot put it into action. You cannot, not even put it, you cannot affect his housing. Mm-hmm. You cannot affect his education, his feeding, his mm-hmm. movement. You cannot do anything to his country. Even his vacations. You cannot do anything to him. Your hate or prejudice towards him affects no part of his life. You have no effect. Mm-hmm. But when we say white people are racist, this means that they use their power in the world. To adversely affect the nations of uh, indigenous people, the education of indigenous people, the accommodation of indigenous people, the, uh, uh, the employment and welfare of indigenous people all over the world. They've used that, and since we don't have that power to do it, I mean, how can you? What, what white man in this world is homeless because a black man needs a house? I can show you communities, even in Africa, that have been displaced because white That's people want to build a company there. Yes. That is racism. That is what we talk about. Racism is a power dynamic that black people don't look at. So, you know, when they say, oh, if people call me racist, I'm telling you, because I criticize European, you know, I say it all the time, but I'm not racist. I cannot even be racist. You know, even at that, I don't hate white people. I hate the system, the, system the European system and the European worldview. But the people there too are just as much victims of their elites as the rest of the world. It's just that, just like the Nigerian elites, the European worker is happy to be white. To be white. The Nigerian elites are happy to be able to buy white. Buy white. Yeah, so, you know, because economics assesses whiteness. Yeah. Whiteness is kind of something you can buy. Whiteness, white, white, you know? yes, whiteness um, it's something that for it has transcended skin color. It's yeah. something you can buy. It's you something know? you can afford when you get a certain level. It can always be like that. Yeah. That's always been, even in the height of slavery in America. There was some, as black people were multi, there were some black people that were free that also owned slaves. Yes. Because they had access whiteness. 
Yes. They were allowed to own slaves to win their slaves. They, they think they are better than we are the civilized blacks. If you read the history of America, one thing young people in Nigeria must do, if I if I ever have control of the Nigerian educational curriculum, we will learn American history. American history. Yes. Um, we will learn American history to see in plain color the future we are heading for. Because we're studying the natives. That's the, the Native American. Americans, the owners of the land. What yes. see? <laughs> America is not a European continent. Yes. It's not a white man land. Yes. Yes. Europeans are from Europe. And they've stolen Australia, they've stolen South America, and they've stolen North America. It's mosquito that see what's in Africa. Yes. They have taken it. Yes. I'm telling you. Yes. In Nigeria. They, it. they took South Africa. Africa. They, they were going to yeah. take it. They were settling. They were trying to settle here. They tried. They tried. They were just dying. The embassy in, uh, in Lagos Island there was called the Iron Coffee. You know, they are meant to be in the consulate was a metal building in yeah. Lagos Island. They were yeah. dying like flies. Anyway, the history of the Native Americans, that's the history, I mean, not the American the history. American, okay. Because you see, the, some Native Americans supported the whites because they called them the civilized. The civilized ones. They could wear suits, they could be. Eh. What Malcolm X described as um, house niggers. They gave them all the privileges of whites. We were using them to fight their brothers to annihilate the bulk of their people. When they had finished the war and collected the major, they call the the migration the Trail of Tears. You can Google it. Google the Trail of Tears and see you can. They were for sure whether from New York, from you know, Cleveland, from all the places where they thought they had all the big big houses. They were millionaires. Send them to refugee, all of them refugee camp with only the things on their back. So all these black people that think that they are something. Stealing and destroying their brothers to go and buy a house in America, buy a house in UK, thinking that they are white. Yeah. You know? <laughs> when they are in Lagos, they say, I don't go to the man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that has a business. You see, these people, they don't understand anything. They, 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 are, they, are, they are stupid blacks. Okay. And I call them stupid blacks because they have the capacity not to be ignorant. Yes. But because choose, of the answers that they have. Uh, they choose. You know, to believe the lie they tell themselves. Because not the back of their mind. Why do you think we are also victims of that same faulty educational system that you're, you're pointing at? Because I mean. No, at this point, they are, they are, you see, so they are such beneficiaries of oppression that they are willfully ignorant. Willfully ignorant. So okay, you a, have the capacity to push you on your limits. Expand your view you and see. In fact, you know the truth. Because you don't live with your father, who you see that is already making more than you should be making. You see the corruption in your household. Yes. You know, but you choose to align with it. No, this is not, you're not a victim anymore. Okay. You're a beneficiary. Yeah, you're a beneficiary. You know, so, when I see the tricks that have been played in our now, Europeans own the entirety of uh, North America. The native Indians are the only reservations yeah. in their own land. So I look at Africans today that think that they can no longer be enslaved. And so, I ask, I so ask the question. So you Africa's future? I ask the question. If Europeans land their warships on the coast of Africa today and declare slavery, what can we do to stop it? Absolutely nothing. Exactly. Because, I mean, we even buy weapons from them for our defense. <laughs> what can they just land their, all of their big, big warship along the coast of all Africa like this? Surround the coast. They say, oh, yeah. Start entering the boat. In fact, I'm going to tell you, oh, don't you drag me. You are coming. I will enter. I will tell you. I will tell you. I will tell you. They bring their ships and they will gladly. You know, now, because you don't understand what's, you know, the yes, organization like the slaves. What's the way it is? They blend the walk away. They will not be there. So, I'm um, moving on to my next question. Um, the second question is um, bordering on, still bordering on racism. Um, you're well traveled, you're very exposed. Um, You've gone on shows. You, you had your first show at, at 15. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, I've been playing since I was 8. Okay, you've been playing since I was 8. Like, eight your, your first show international show, I mean. Oh, I was 15. Okay, your first international My show. My first show. Yes, yes, international. So that was um, after your dad passed. Have you, you know, because even with the privileges that you enjoy, your band, have you or any member of your band ever been victims or uh, of racism or abuse recently in any part of the world? <laughs> Let me give you a story. Okay. The president of Africa, when he was uh, 
terrorist attack in France. Okay. That's what's going on. Beat the French people. The French people. They only them inside boss like a savage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. Even the president of Africa. The president of Africa. Not one president. president. <laughs> president. Hey, hey. What? You know Paris is, the, is like cookies and cream. Mm. There's no black person in Europe already experience this thing. If you have cousins, brothers and sisters that yeah, are yeah, working there, whatever they are, in their yeah. office every day. But they just, you know, they have to take it. Because you see, this is why the Europeans are happy to employ plenty of Africans. Because the very Africans don't mind racism. They don't mind the racism. Yeah, but so the Caribbeans yeah. and the uh, African Americans that have been with them for 200 years, their eyes don't open. Mm. They don't think that shit anymore. You know, so the to silence them, they are shipping the, the, the ignorant ones. Speaking about um, black Americans and um, Caucasians, people who have been with these people for long. Now, part of the conversation is that they see things differently. They have a better understanding to a, to, to a certain extent, especially black Americans. Now, African Americans. African Americans, yeah. Black people who live in the diaspora, especially in America. They are now... Um, they, they have more exposure than Africans who are living in Africa. Now, there seems to be a, a, a form of, um, will I call it um, a squabble or a quarrel, like some sort of covert discrimination even among African Americans and Africans who live in Africa. Uh, what do you think is responsible for that? Uh, that is obvious. It is sponsored by white conservatives. White conservatives? Yes, in America. Just the way the white televangelists in America, the racist televangelists, sponsor many of your pastors here. And that's when they spew a lot of anti African rhetoric in their churches and talk about our God as evil. Is their masters there pushing the button? You know, all of them put homosexuality for head and all this that they fight against that has nothing to do with what, what they should really be using their power to do. fight against. You know, I don't understand why nobody has ever been on the we spirit never cut anybody for sure before we enter a uh, governor wife when they enter spirit. I was gonna store up three hundred million of people who are here. We signed the contract. Jesus has you know <laughs> those kind of things. Those those is that not a bad no. Now some kind of stupid things to diminish Africa, uh, eliminate Africans, mm -hmm. break our solidarity. Because when you go to these places, all you hear panitism, it permeates all the things that Europeans sponsor in our society in terms of they have influence you know so we are music our movies our religion where these ngos put money you, know, you find out that the rhetoric is the same you know your father wants to kill you your mother wants to kill you your sister wants to kill you your brother wants to kill you your auntie wants to kill you and your best friend wants to kill you your wife wants to kill you so we in the cities we are we are afraid to have solidarity I mean, with our brothers and sisters in the village you know even when these big um, politicians per se come to these churches, they are giving funds. Of course, of course, you must see that this are that's what I'm saying. Like we have oppressors in waiting because everything that education in society puts the oppressor as the example. As the example. Even when you're in school, you know, don't you want to be like Dangote? Don't you want to be like Otedola? Don't you want to be like uh, Peter Obi or Tinubu? So, and you see what they do. So in the back of your mind, you understand that whatever they do is right because they're the example of yes, society. Exactly. You know, role model. So it, it is. It is the same thing that happens. You know, uh, uh, he will pay the piper. It is it piper. Uh, he will pay the piper. Piper the pays the tune. Yeah. So the way these people can sponsor, uh, you can sponsor the religious body secretly, and that's the same connection. No. You know. Because so, American artists like Ice Cube, all these, uh, to spew this conservative rhetoric, oh, the immigrants are taking their jobs. So, black Americans are not losing jobs. Now, what the African Americans don't understand mm -hmm. is that the majority of the Africans they come in contact with are also children of these elites here that are as anti black as anything, mm -hmm. that also don't like them because they are black. They are black yeah. You understand? These Africans are this, this African, this African American. But coming to um, conservatism and liberalism in America, per se, uh, it, it, on the surface, there seems to be a lot of difference in, you know, ideologies on the paper and everything. But no, I don't know. The conservatives and liberal are the same thing. Uh, that's uh, what well, well, I'm saying. Because on paper, it, oh, it sounds... And the core of their 
they are all white supremacists. They are all, so, exactly. Yeah. So that's why that. Okay. It's just that. It's just that the conservatives think only white people can be white supremacists, but the liberals are wise. They know so they anybody. Can, everybody can can be white supremacists. So their own strategy is kind of like different. They they accommodate yeah. more people. So look at it this way: the train is going up the cliff, right? Mm -hmm. The conservatives are arguing only white people should drive the train. The liberals are arguing white, white black, gay, trans. Yes, yeah, you drive the train. None of them are talking about the end of the road. <laughs> I, 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 I get the point because I mean Obama himself was exactly yeah, yeah. definitely a white supremacist. Now, when we look at this picture, the narrative in America is paid for by these uh, conservatives, and then the liberals. Because of white supremacy, they understand that we are fighting ourselves, it strengthens their position. The liberals embrace, embrace the immigrants. Mm -hmm. You know, that is angering the other Africans who need a job, who deserve a job. What I think we need to do as African people is to understand each other. Africans going to America must first and foremost understand that every privilege and right that they're able to access in that America is due to the blood of their cousins. Those Without the, the sacrifice and the bloodshed of African Americans, black people in America cannot do it. You can't even come that enter a bus in America. They would not have had access to those privileges. For 250 years, our cousins have struggled to open that place for African people. They paid with their blood. But and now they are tired. But there's this um, they are knackered, they are weary. They are weary. After 250 years of oppression. Now we come with all these our resources we bring from Africa, our talent. Of, we reach there, what do we want to do? Instead of cooperating with them, doing business with them, let's put things in your neighborhood, let's work together. And yeah. Maybe our consciousness is not that high, I understand. But instead of cooperating with them, we arrive there competing with them. Because, you know, we go there with a survivor mindset. There, there's a lot of survivor. Well, anybody who wants to. A generation of Africans must learn that we want to thrive, not survive. You know? And instead of surviving, Let's make some sacrifices to thrive. Surviving is an endless sacrifice of yourself. Of yourself. You are the one presenting yourself on the altar of capitalism to be bled. And I, I was saying this to a friend of mine some days ago. Like, I don't think Nigerians are tired of suffering or tired of this system. I'm telling you, because we continue to sacrifice ourselves at the altar. But we don't complain <clears throat> that the altar exists. Mm. That's a All we complain story. about is that the ask is too much. This altar wants too much. This altar wants too much. This altar is asking too much. Yes. We don't complain about the altar. We don't altar complain about why does this altar exist in the first place? Why must we come here and sacrifice ourselves to this thing? No, that's not our complaint. Because we all believe at the back of our mind that the blessings that we are sacrificing for one day will be. Um, my own tower. <laughs> yeah. We are all going to church with a line to you that you are special. Don't worry. See, I, this is my father's house. I swear on this street, among all that grew up here, maybe only four or five families still own their family house on this street. Everybody don't sell them. Maybe one of the things that we are fighting for. Yeah. Children are so you have to go and rent flat in a week. In Oba. In different areas. They won't know their house big. They don't know who rent one flat for island. The whole house where you they do nonsense for. The children cannot sustain that wealth. There's no how many of Abela's business is still functioning? How many of Abela's children are in top 100 of richest men in Nigeria? But why do you think um black wealth is mostly not sustainable? Because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Interesting. What does it mean, black wealth? It doesn't exist. Nigeria in 2015 was rebased by Okunjo Wella, the okay. great. <laughs> That woman, what the man can do, the woman can definitely do it better. <laughs> what the man can do, Okoye Wella showed me that in corruption, a ah, woman can be better. <laughs> All right, do you know how much Apple alone is worth? The a company Apple's GDP is more than that of Africa. A the whole of Africa, it's one point something trillion. Exactly, yes, that's one company, Microsoft. Microsoft is also around one point. Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, they're three largest. Above one trillion dollars. Oh, yeah, Facebook. 
Meta and then um, there's also whatever going to tell their new big company, their new big company, GM, Lockheed Martin, going that's money. <laughs> what you are doing here? That's that's a company doing what you are doing here. And what you are doing here? What we are doing here is I better pass my neighbor. <laughs> we are playing. Where a gang of people, instead of concentrating on developing their own nation, with the resources of the nation, you know, they, they say go and work and bring money for us. What we have, let's use it to be great. You want to use it to show me that you can buy new pens. When billionaires can only buy things, don't you see that there's, there's a problem? There's a problem. So when they say white black people cannot, there's nothing like that. That whole thing is an illusion. Any black man that say has is an illusion. When he die, the people will have to come for the time. And they'll give it to the next the face next of that you have, you almost worship. <laughs> to pretend to you people are seeing something is so yes, you can always consume their goods like that with Pogo. That's that's we don't read our history. That's another thing. Um, they always pop them up. I didn't they use that that would be a slave to usurp the whole of the Bonnie Kingdom, steal the Pamoy trade, using that kind of a slave revolt, style that kind of the oppression of the Bonnie people. Uh, they put that would be there. He sent his army to go and fight with the British to destroy the Ashanti and the Ashanti people. Still their bodies too. When they finish the war, they put set up a sword of a uh, this thing, give her a title. Uh, what did he give him? Uh, one one who got a title. Like an uh, order of the British, whatever. Yes. He gave. Now one day, he died as a slave. <laughs> so he, they took him back to the British. <laughs> so the, the, this system that, it's something that they seem to have perfected so much. This system of um, bringing out a few people. It's almost as if they have the finest among us, leading the armies that invade our country. Like, they bring out very few people and then they empower them. And they empower them in such a way that it's not transferable. So after they are gone, they now look for the next person to empower. They just keep passing it around. That is how it is. That is how it is. Uh, amongst the uh, all indigenous people, you know, in our in our different spaces, we, different we occupy. Spaces. That's why I said that Paulo Ferreira has been the one that has given the best option of how we exit. And that's what I preach to people in Nigeria every day. And that's why we have the movement of the people. Okay. That we must organize ourselves in allegiance with our people. Our talent of, as Africans must be used for the development of Africa. Africa. In Africa. The issue is that most of the talented and professional people in Africa have been brainwashed to believe that our talent is our own. It's so that we can buy European cars. It's so we can live in European style houses. And travel to European countries. Patronize their products. It has now got to the extent that even the best professionals of like Africa do not serve Africa. They don't. The best footballers of Nigeria don't play for Nigeria. The best doctors of Nigerian origin don't treat Nigerians. The yeah. best uh, swimmers in Nigeria don't swim for like whatever talent. But don't you think? Don't you think? Now coming down to that, don't you think it's because there's no system in place to protect them? It's not a good enough reason to do anything. You cannot tell your father that I'm doing this for Africans and you think, oh, wow, my son, I'm so proud of you. That's a great reason to do this. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Whereas Europeans, you can do anything. You can go and destroy a whole country. You justify it. Oh, we are defending you. Oh, you. we are creating jobs for you. Europe and Europeans are always a good easy for it to be done. Yes. You understand? In Anybody who they, they make movies of their heroes that sacrifice, they are going to kill. They make heroes of men that commit genocide Genesis. against other people for them to harm them. And and it's it's very it's it's a good thing you mentioned this because why did you kill these ten million people to preserve to preserve your own economy? Yeah. It's always a good reason. We, but Africa and Africans is not it's never a good reason to do anything. So if you tell your friend now, for example, you have a job from let's say. Uh, uh, United States Embassy to be a spy, you know. And now you will tell your friends like, ah, this is going to be a spy. They're going to pay me hundred thousand dollars a month. You now have a job to be working at a security firm in maybe DSS in Nigeria. Okay. That they're going to pay you hundred thousand a year. You now say, yeah, I want to protect my country. You now go and take the hundred thousand a year job. You now tell your friends, that, ah, I took the hundred. So I took the hundred thousand a year job in Noah. 
to protect Nigeria. Everybody will laugh at you and say, you are a fool. Which Nigeria should they protect? Or oh, there. So, what are those things? things? But, but to twist that now, what you just said about DSS and them this being the spy for, if, when you now consider the fact that these things have hierarchies. Now, let's say you now take a job with a Nigerian security agency, and you now observe that your bosses are serving those people. Mm -hmm. The same people who gave you the employment that you rejected. I mean, it's it's more like turning in circles at the end. Uh, of if it. you really rejected, rejected that job, those are the people that will agitate from within those institutions to bring down such people. That's where the leak will start coming out from. Okay. You understand what okay. I'm saying? Yes. yes. Those are people that are going to talk to power. To power. Because of the, their consciousness. Exactly. And sure. also because their hands are clean. Sure. Sure. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So we live in a society where betraying your own, destroy your own country, is seen as a nice thing to do, you know? Girls will be telling their friends, like, it, uh, like, like their own politician is toasting me. It's, a, it's like success has happened. Prayers have been answered. None of the friends will say, I want to start spending blood money. I want to follow this person that is killing millions of people. Like, no, I'm telling you. It's true. If Bin Laden were to toast a Nigerian girl, all of us say, That man will kill American people. We need to follow Bin Laden. We will be terrorists. I don't know how many people will kill for America. But you tell them, I want to follow one Nigerian politician that has killed more Nigerians. Than the Latin has killed Americans. They say, Oh my, the kind of God this like this. <laughs> I'm going back to now. So, we go and celebrate. Yes, but we said, Africans and Africa. It's not a good enough reason to do anything. Because that's the education we've been given. That's the education. Okay, um, so there's black on black prejudice, there's black on black discrimination. But that um, can be um, classified as maybe. Um, tribalism or ethnocentrism, and then there's black, uh, there's white. Tribalism doesn't exist. Too. Tribalism doesn't exist. That's an interesting viewpoint. It doesn't exist. Now. Have you been to Duty Bank? <laughs> well, have I you been to Duty Bank before? Yes, I've been. For example, to, yes. You know people are there working. Okay. Also, people are there working. Okay. You know people are there working. Okay. Country is moving forward. Interesting. But when it comes to our country, to move our country forward, there's only the Yoruba, the Yoruba ego. But in their own personal business, go to a job farm. You know people are working there, I'm sure. How some people are working there, I'm sure. You know people are working there. His family, the farm don't they say don't they say <laughs> but they say but they say the family and they reach to turn. Wow. The way it's growing. <laughs> Go to pay any business of any of the rich men in Nigeria. All their banks and their schools, their private universities, they build left right and center, their secondary school, they own all the hospitals, their malls. Is the only one tribe of people that work in each one? Okay. How come their own personal business can thrive with Nigerians of different tribes working inside? And the country can But the country cannot thrive because we are living inside. See, we as Nigerians, we don't like analysis that don't allow us to be lazy. Wow. It's easy to sit down and say, we are inside people are this. They're so easy. But to sit down See, and truly understand the analysis of the country. And now putting the work to end what is going on. Mm -hmm. And that's hard work. That's hard work. Okay, that's okay. It's just like being the president of Nigeria to really preside over this country in a just way. It's possible. But it is hard work. There's no time to take guests to Dubai. There's no time, yes, to go and do shopping. There's no time for no time to watch football. No you want to watch football. There's no time. You have no time. And every day you sleep, you sleep at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. because you have to be up at 5. Yeah, there's no like a damn politician, you can sit there, you are up at 3 a.m. doing a meeting because you don't have work the next day. You don't really have anything to work with you. You understand? Okay, so um, uh, our presidents travel across these walls for meetings, just to hold meeting. But they don't travel across the country to inspect projects. Sure. They will mm -hmm. go and open all the, uh, the commission here. No! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so communities that are un uh, under underdeveloped, impoverished communities. What is the job of the president, ministers, governors? Mm -hmm. When do they visit these places? When do they inspect? When do they draw plans? Do they fly over the country to look at what's going on, see where they can build bridges? And... Nobody's working. 
I don't think anybody in Nigeria think of any rich Nigerian man, and the first thing that comes to your mind is our hard work. You think you enjoy it? Everybody wants to be rich in Nigeria because you will enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. Finish. Yeah, if I look at Bill Gates, I think ah, genius. That's how the that's how the part. Even though he's a genius, Bill Gates has not been genius anything before in his life. <laughs> Neither has Elon Musk. And it's the truth. But 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 this, there are people who will disagree with your opinion when you say people like Bill Gates and then people like Elon Musk because of the. Um, the, 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 the persona, the persona, yes, that's persona. the hard work. Interesting, that's the hard work. So, you don't think they've, they've done anything exceptional, even, the, even though they've built companies? Yeah, that because I always tell people, do this, do that, do this. But that, that is hard work. Yes, that is tough as a skill. Yes, it's a skill, but it's not genius. Genius, the true genius around too much. Well, you know, I, I kind of like any that. rich man that wants to run a company, you can run your company, you go to school, you blend it, you dedicate yourself to it. You do the job like anybody can do. Civil servants do that every day, not like a state person by the world. Nobody calls them genius. You know? Please. <laughs> Alright, so um, do you think that um, black, like, because like we're saying, every other race, white people, Asians, like any other part of the world, when it comes to, it's almost as if black people collectively are the lowest and, uh, when it comes to the ranking on the food chain. Now, do you think our inability to invent, uh, to invent anything or the technology? Inability. Our own, like. What do you mean inability? Our, our the ability or our lack of capacity. Our lack of capacity to invent, okay, if we put it like that, to invent uh, anything or the technology. Yeah, yeah, everybody is investing. Just as I said, we have enemies that are completely against. Okay. It takes investment in research and development to invent, and nobody really invents anything. The world is full of innovations today. Innovations. Things that will be invented were already invented by Africans thousands of years ago. And people have been innovating new ideas. So a lot of innovation, is it part of the reasons why people look down on us? No, no, no. Okay. But they steal from us, that's why they look down on us. Okay, because they steal from us, yes. that's why they look down. The defense mechanism. That's interesting. You know, when you steal from someone, okay. you know, and you, you don't want the person to ask. You know, the police stop you at checkpoint. I want to steal your money from your pocket. They just stop at the money. Money is the wrong asset. You just your money want to steal. So, so it's, it's it's a kind of it's like a psychological. Uh, yeah. it's a when you are stealing from somebody, you okay. know, you want to steal. You are better than the person you are stealing from. Sure. There are ways to go about it. Yeah, so uh, that, okay. That's why. Okay. Don't feel it's not because of you. It's because of them. I say to people all the time, you know, whatever Europeans, you know. Uh, to the rest of the world, they were first to themselves. Sure. You must study these people's histories. Sure. They themselves call their past the dark ages. The dark ages, yes. The medieval times, they call yes. it the dark ages. Go and look at the amount of torture, torture devices. Yes. The yeah. sick ways yes. Europeans invented yes. among themselves to punish, to kill, to kill. I mean, there are museums to these things. That's how depraved it is. They, they had countless tribal was within themselves. What is it, genocide? I mean, like, they, they, there's, for me, I know the school of thought that the, when they stopped killing themselves is when they now realize, oh, oh bro, they're, 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 they're actually kill. I mean, why not let's just... Look at our women. Them. You know what people say? Mm -hmm. Africans oppress their women. I say, Africans that want to be Europeans oppress their women. women. Exactly. And this is one of the reasons why many African men first embrace uh, Westernization. Western, Westernization was the political class, you understand, of our elite, mm -hmm. embrace religion, Western religion, yes. but the weak women, women exactly. in their society, because the women were competing with men in our society, normal for everything. Yes. So this new system gave men a way to <coughs> stop Africa. It was so, oh, oh. Yes, like, it, it, it's just evil men. Like, like if you check um, the history of um, franchise and voting in some European, even in America, yeah, I mean, we have to go to the But those of us, like, I would use the Hebrew traditional system for example because it's something I'm very familiar with. Those of us who are from there, we know that there was a system in place where both the men and the women had equal part in the society. I think when you, if you read, like, so that, that, that just shows you that women were revered, like, they were, they were respected and valued in our own traditional society. These are the early letters from Europeans that faced. One of the things that amazed their explorers was the freedom the African women had. They couldn't, they couldn't believe it. You, you know, but, but so when I said, like, like, when you hear a woman's place is in the kitchen, in the kitchen. I always tell people, give me the equivalent, the African equivalent in your language. Say it to me. In fact, in Yoruba, you cannot make that 
same Speak sentence. sentence. If you say it, you will sound like the imbecile. Like you sound idiot. Your grammar will be wrong. Let me put it that way. Let me use the taboo to say a woman's place is in the kitchen. And there, there's no way equivalent to it that I know. Just like in, my, in Yoruba language, there's no word for son. There's no word for daughter. There's no way there's female. I go above God. But like, oh, I have a son. I have a daughter. There's no word. You don't go, you don't go. There's no way you go, you will be okuni, you will be You know? <laughs> you know? But there's no word. I say that this is a son in Yoruba language. Because Europeans understood that divide to the core. It was it was part of them. Patriarchy was so much entwined. But how do we how do we now get to this stage where um most of our if you go on social media, Twitter, um you hear things like especially from younger people, they'll tell you, oh, African culture is so misogynistic and patriarchal. You know, these people are talking about African culture. What do they know about how African do, culture? How do we get to the point where you TV now they watch all these films sponsored by televangelists in America? They are going to the thing. I want African man in village beating his wife all day. I, people, I always say, because they talk about submission. I said, there's no submission to individual in African culture. African culture, you submit to the culture. To the culture. And the culture has rules for different people to play. Nobody submits. You, you, that doesn't mean you, your wife doesn't talk in the house. That, oh, you control what happens in the house. Yes, but they still control what happens in the business. If you fuck up, you are going to be broke, nigga. <laughs> so, there was always balance. So, this whole submission thing. And when men, this Europeanized men, every time they go to oppress their children and wife at home, they suddenly remember, oh, I'm an African man. Why is that that moment? That you're not African, saying. to be an African, not really you pick and choose. It's not a door you enter and come out of. <laughs> you are not African on Sunday when you are in church. You are not African when you knock your suit and tie, go to work. You know, when you're an African in your thinking, you're an African in your own view. Yes. You're not African. You don't really mean African. African. In fact, your name is Benjamin. All the products you're using are. Your name is Benjamin, the last I shared. <laughs> so when you now come to your wife and now. You're a central press. You're not really where you're a bad act. And remember that you're an African. Hey. So something else that we're also looking at. Don't you stay a European lady. You know what? Because I was telling you, like, if you understand African culture, you understand the power that African men use in that culture. Yes. You know, our religion, for example, every religion is a reflection of society, of that society True. that created and mindset. Yeah. So that's why we have gods and goddesses. When women are risen to the point of worship, worship, which is the highest point in any society, when you get to the point of worship. That form cannot can no longer be said to be oppressed. To be oppressed, exactly. That's why we give Europeans it is becoming a history lesson. We give Europeans their first religion. So when you had the Zeus and Jupiter and all these things that they used to worship back in the day, they got that from Egypt. We gave them that condition because we civilized Europe. And then the Socrates, all the masters of their life and was all studied in Greece. The African people that were black like me and you know the Arabs that live there today. That have been sought and stolen our brother's land and pushed them to the back of society where nobody sees that the real Egyptians are like you and me. So everybody look at TV and think Egyptians are Arab white people. <laughs> so even at this, uh, that's why Europeans have to reject Zeus. It is, even as we are Christian and Muslim in Nigeria, some people still worship a family. It's true. Shongo, all the gods still have their family. Why is there no single European still worship Zeus? Jupiter. Athena, all those they are ancient. What happened to you? What happened to the Congo? You also understand that Europeans are the highest extremists. They're very, they're very when they decide to move, you don't move. It's true. But when they put their mind to a thing, they do it. All the Europeans that did not move were born at the stage. They wanted to hold on to the African worldview. You want to see the African world, say we don't see Jesus born this one, crucify this one, cut this one. All these communities and societies were exterminated. Wiped out. They didn't mean for what they found to embrace. This God that doesn't have wife has a son. No single female priest in the Bible. No single female angel. No, no disciple. No, I say no female angel. Any woman in the Bible must do bad thing. Anytime woman show face, whether they have both Quran and Bible. <laughs> when they are living in VR that time during colonialism. You see the way the woman will tear white slap for hours. 
that will cry. We said, oh. so to be civilized, he said, must tell your wife, stop. Say, you don't see what Mr. Joseph will give her. <laughs> but we're not, we're not at that stage where, how did we, um, because this, this discussion about men and women and power and uh, the balance of power within both societies is something that's very important in today's society. Because now, most times when we see Nigerian migrants who move abroad with their wives, we hear all kinds of stories on the internet about how the woman is now using the power of the legal system in the place to um, subjugate the man. So how... How did we get to this point where these people who created these oppressive systems now present themselves as the Messiah to the women who now go to um, organized courts within that place to be let me, to let, me give you a story. let me give you a story. A friend of mine working in a company, mm -hmm. right? They were interviewing people for workers. Okay. Africans don't know how the world works. Case closed. Interesting. We That's don't know true. how the world works. Africans don't know how the world Case works. Case closed. I'll tell you. So now, they are, they are, my friend told me, we are sitting in the list. Mm -hmm. They interviewed an Indian guy. Okay. They were Indian people on the company side. Mm -hmm. They interviewed their brother. They give her work. Asians, everybody, and the white people come. Mm -hmm. They interview their brother. He reads the term of one Niger guy who will interview one Niger guy. Okay. He tells the person, yeah. Even if you interview the Indo recuse himself because they've been Nigerians together to show the person I ain't good part. Interesting. <laughs> so we don't know how the world works. Beyonce is telling you to leave your boyfriend if you cheat. She did the whole album of her husband cheating. She didn't leave. <laughs> interesting. That's an interesting idea. Hillary Clinton okay. is the number one feminist of the world. Sure. They cut out one of them. They give him getting no job inside the presidential office. He didn't leave. Yeah. So how the world works and how they want you to see the world two different things. Two different. And I think that yes. women that go there and show their men paper mm -hmm. is because those men have shown them paper there. Yeah. You know, and it is not in our place also to put mouth in people's personal relationships. If a woman wants to deal with her husband, let her deal with the husband. If the man wants to deal with the wife. Anything with his wife, it's not my business. It's not my business. Don't take it to court. Take it to court. I don't put my mouth in personal business. relationships. Yeah. All our advice is that I believe that the kind of women, the kind of men that women want, mm -hmm. determines how society shifts and bends. The kind so, of men that women want. Yes. So that's because why the anti-social media, the uh, press you down, so called press, oh. you know, press you down. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't tell you their full name. They are the press. The press cannot be one word, it's press you down. Let me finish. Okay. You know, the only thing is printing press is a lie. Press you down. It's press you down. Press you down. Uh, so, um, and the social media, you know, these people are billions are spent on. Entertainment on religion on media to create, you know, a false narrative, narrative for sense. women to key into, you know. Mm -hmm. So, we live in a world today where people's character matters nothing. Everybody talks about the bag, oh, I love a good job, it's kind, that kind is a good job. Nobody's about the bag, the bag, oh, so. For me, that's why so much is done to manipulate the My feminine, the fe even feminine energy generally. In in capitalist in capitalism, feminine energy must be rejected because it it is subversive. It's subversive to capitalism. Okay. So the things they call feminine, like if we all want, if we all give value to sharing, mm -hmm. less people will need and want. If we, if we are more generous, if we are kind, mm. if we are trusting, if we are understanding, if we are cooperative, cooperative, these things subvert capitalism yeah. because that means people will be empowering themselves so, without an employee. I mean, without an employer. So when you do these things, they say you are girly. Oh, it's not being a girl. Even feminists mm. want to be like men. 
You know, that's fire to nobody wants to that feminine energy, that softness, mm -hmm. that care that we actually need in this world is negated, is seen as being weak. You know, so you need to be tough, untrusty, you know, don't trust anybody, watch your back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be stoic. All these things we say. That is utterly impossible to be. You know, honestly, because as more and more you do it, the more you break your own humanity to it. You know? So this is why this kind of energy is being projected in the world so that, you know, people like so that these terrible men can have good women by their side who don't see their evil deeds as bad for their characteristics because now they are successful. You know, so as long as they're successful, whatever evil thing they are doing doesn't matter. So what I always say is character matters. African women have a big role to play there, you know, in shaping our society with the kind of people we meet with and the next generation that we bring forth to the world. You know, say no to evil men. I mean, can we get this hashtag going? You know? <laughs> hashtag say no to. So finally, um, <laughs> I, 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 my last question borders on skin whitening and then skin bleaching. Now we've had a an increase, a surge in skin whitening in recent years. A lot of people, basically, the the impression and the motion that has been pushed by press you down if i'm going to go your word now is that is my father has a coinage okay not yeah. mine is that um <laughs> white everything white is beautiful and everything black is not um, beautiful white is now the standard for beauty which is something that has affected um Af africans and um, psychologically especially in nigeria so a lot of people are now bleaching their skin so See, what, let me tell you something okay every skin bleacher mm -hmm. is a victim of capitalism Interesting. See, whiteness is there's something about whiteness that gave it the edge in its war with blackness. Mm -hmm. That in African philosophy and worldview, mm -hmm. one of the concrete tenets is this. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Africans hold that thing so dear because it allows you to be humble in the presence of nature. Really, we use that actually to preserve nature okay, because you can cut this tree down. Because you have the does it mean you should cut this tree down? You understand that tree has a way, it has a life, it has no spirit, it has something to do there. We give it, we now even start giving the tree fucking spiritual powers. Yes, where we use go and worship at the end the ancestral tree of this place. And we give things their respect, mm -hmm. not because we can't say, Oh, it's just a tree, yes, but you see, whiteness. If you can do it, do it, do it big. They're not just there. Do it big. Uh -huh. So they can create nuclear bomb. Russia alone can have 5,000. When the whole world, just 200 nuclear bombs, the world is destroyed. No more war. Not the planet Earth, not uh, life, yeah. but our world. Our world is a concept. Yes. 200 nuclear bombs will destroy the world. And Russia alone has 5,000. 5,000. America life. Has sixty thousand, three thousand, three thousand, something. UK one five. See, you see that kind of madness. These are the people you see as civilized. You know. Anyway, this concept. Mm -hmm. You open make cigarettes. Okay. Kills millions of people. But the mission is done big. Where no, it's not. No company can ban it. You understand what I'm saying? Because Europeans make the best cigarettes. And they make a lot of money from it. Alcohol. See? It's so dangerous, just like cigarettes. People say cigarettes is dangerous. People are not smoking. Get killed by cigarettes. But nobody talk about how dangerous alcohol is. That even people that are not drunk, they are standing at the bus stop, just waiting for bus, JJ, a drunk driver will come there and kill you. Because of alcohol. Because he's drunk. Alcohol is sold everywhere. As we are talking now, somebody has died. From kidney failure, liver failure, accident, different atrocities. You understand what I'm saying? So, whiteness, everything that black people have come in contact with whiteness is this is the business. So, if black white man have created skin bleaching cream, do you think black people are safe from it and not use it? Where are you? You are lucky, you are lucky. They didn't tell you that you have to be rubbing it on every baby. When they are born, they will die. Wow. Don't be happy. You don't know this extent. You know how 
Do you know that Europeans were selling heroin to children? Do you know our history at all? Do you know what they do? You know what has happened in this world? That heroin was first, you are selling to children, it's good for TV. Hmm. Some are dying. Some are making money. One of America now is uh, addicted to oxy. The whole middle belt is a heroin epidemic. How? What will this company do? Purdue. Purdue, yes, Purdue Pharmacy. Sold millions of America heroin as oxycotin. It's not addictive. The most addictive thing in the world. <laughs> billions, billions of dollars. So you think if one white one has invented now, now black people they want to sell it to. Uh, that's yeah. It's, it appears that's a target market. There, there's a report by the WHO that. So it must now also be made to be our problem. Oh, why wow, I can't remain beating that screen. Yes, we must address that. Okay. But my question is, who is making it, and what are you making it for? Is no one bleach? Like even the people who bleach aspire to be like them. Yeah, exactly. So the people that are making understand what they created. Mm. They have to create the market. Right? They knew what they are created, but they are made a market for a product. Right? If it, even with natural hair, there seems to be this craze for um, artificial wigs and imported and stuff like that. Uh, uh, somebody was um, seen on um, Insta blog or one of these blogs that they say something that, oh, you should not go anywhere with your natural hair. So everything, I'm a big brother lady, I've forgotten her name now. But this is what I'm saying also. These people will watch and listen. There are so many great. Beautiful, intelligent women in this world that don't wear this wig. So, this is the point I'm trying to make to you. Okay. Who made this person that was speaking a social anthropologist? Is the person an anthropologist? Not at all. A sociologist, a sociology expert? Not at all. These people that mount this podcast, what are their qualifications to speak to human life? What is right? Are they psychiatrists? You have do- they have degrees in psychology. Yeah, no, no. they are big brother alumni. Exactly. These are nobodies with no qualification, but they are giving platforms that speak to me. That nice. even professionals don't have. So you must ask yourself the questions. The question: Why that? We live in a society where the adults are cowards. Youth don't develop nation. Nations are built with the experience of the old and the energy of the youth yes. so when the old are dumb and cowardly you know that's why you say you see the doing challenge with the youth anything young people are doing in nigeria the old ones endorse it because they are afraid of their youth because they know they've not done anything for them they are afraid they are afraid of coming out and the youth their own youth doing there so they want to be popular they want to be popular instead of growing up as it should be. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is the disconnect. When whatever is being done in our society, mm-hmm. can you do it here in China? Not at all. You it's can't watch what you like in China. It's a very related society. You can't because the adults are not cowards. They know what their mission is. They know they have, they have the experience. So what they do, they should give it to their youth. So you have the energy to move that forward. This is what you need to do. This is what is necessary for you to do. You wouldn't want to go out, we could deal with you. But because Nigeria is uh, uh, a coward, they are afraid. Because you know, if America is saying, they, they do want to protest against like, them. Hey, human rights, they didn't let us watch CNN. Human rights, America being the owner of CNN, modernly come to the aid of CNN in the aid of we are supporting free speech. Not that we want CNN to continue their business, no, no. We are continuing supporting free speech. Uh-huh. So with the support of the free speech, they know that America can sanction them. Mm-hmm. And if America sanctions them, where will they go and spend their money? Yeah, eh? they where will I go holiday? Eh? Where will I import Gucci? How will I get to it all? That was the doing Nigeria elite. Uh, they are cowards. Because they know that to fix this country, to do what is right for this country, means you step on some few toes. And your people, but your people will be on your side. So if your people are on your side, the worst that will happen to you is that what is happening to Maduro in Venezuela, you'll be sanctioned. Oh, that's so now you can't go to America, you can't go to UK, you cannot use their goods. They are forced to make yours. The Chinese were ready to, Venezuela is ready to make, they are, they are moving forward. I bet they are not enjoying champagne every week. But we must choose 
We want champagne, as Thomas Sankara said. Not me, because maybe I'm too stupid. But Thomas Sankara said we must choose champagne for a few or drinking water for all. And obviously, I think Nigerians prefer champagne for a few. Even when I don't have water to drink, maybe they are maybe. dancing to songs about champagne. I mean, look at how disconnected are you? Are you from me? I need to... But don't say to a song about champagne and Rolls Royce and Richard Mille, something you, have, you will never touch in your life. I know that is not for you. I guarantee the system you will not it, touch it. Makes it almost impossible. The system is built in a way that it will be hard for you to get to that level. <clears throat> I'm not saying don't listen. You can't listen. But why is he making you happy? <laughs> no. Maybe because it, it makes them dream. No. There are oppressors in, there are oppressors in waiting. Sure. You are oppressors. You are just thinking, oh, it's mm-hmm. okay. One day, you, are, you don't have a skill. You are 27. You are thinking, bro, you don't, have, you don't have a job. But you are thinking, I'll be a pioneer before I die. See, that's an oppression in waiting. Means you are waiting for somebody one day to send you one message. Are you, just give you the yeah. Are you waiting to pay 50 million on the ground like the Sun <laughs> <laughs> So I don't understand the concept behind it, but it is still part of the brainwash. You know, and it is all the professionals that allow these people I'm talking about now to be that way. Because we also we are the journalists, yeah. you know, that will be writing one stupid story. Three kids, one three million, uh, uh, two kids in Shango win 500 million. But we're not right. Seven thousand kids destroyed by Beth Niger in the next day. No, 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 you don't know the game that there are people paying for these things That's to be out there. Like social engineering and stuff. And I know for a fact that our politicians employ racist social engineers from America to come and tell them what to do here today. It's what it looks like. When, when you look at the way society is structured, and I like you said, in America, look at the way they push away Jay Z, Beyonce to mislead those black people from America. That's how we, as in, in replica, it's the same people they employ. And that's the same game we just set up. So we are just here, dying by the millions and jumping up for hundreds. You show you other people made it this year, and you forget that 20 million perished. Okay, um, we, in this, um, we're now in the bonus um, question session. These are just like quick questions. Now, in one of your recent interviews, you mentioned that music should reflect society. I, I feel this is something you've already touched on. But do you think, um, I mean, with the whole Afrobeat boom and, you know, Afrobeat now being global, do you think that um, music in Nigeria reflects our reality? Because, I mean, when we see, you, you said a lot about it, when we now see things on social media, oh, the video is buying this jet, um, this one owns a particular private jet, and uh, this one spent how much in the club, millions and everything. People do not create that impression outside of here, even within here, that oh, there's a lot of money. So, do you think that music, that the music we're making now in Nigeria, reflects our reality, or do you think we need to do better in terms of making music that reflects our reality? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I have to answer that question for anybody. You know, as I said, I put, I made a process to like fake people are worse than fake drinks. I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, and, and for me that was the fact, you know, um, we've embraced so much fakeness. There's a people are paid to lie to people. You know, this money that everybody is saying, me I'm an African, say, I know for a fact that Africans don't have money. It, it's almost as if we have a numbers problem here. We don't have money. Yes, we have some people that can access the wealth and do it, but as Africans, say, there's no money there. I know that. That's why one of my great ambitions in life is to see an Africa where we are truly beginning to grow wealth for our people. And not wealth from exploitation or extortion or uh, corruption and imperialism and you know just extracting completely and exploiting a whole... No, no, no. We find a different way because we have been blessed. We are blessed people. You know, not only can we grow ourselves, we can help the world to, to grow in a new way. You know, and that for me is the hope that keeps me going. You know, that truly Africans of my generation have been blessed with a unique position 
to be the ones to start a new world. And that for me, nothing is greater than that. Nothing is greater than being part of something that the ancestors are giving this kind of opportunity to. And as Franz Fanon said, you know, every generation, you know, no matter how obscure, mm. I know, uh, every generation out of ability or security must find their mission and either fulfill or betray. Or betray. I feel that we as Africans of this generation, we are so blessed that the ancestors have put our mission right. We didn't even have to, it's not even in relative obscurity, you know. So currently, I will be training you. Well, I will, I will, I will the ones of us, those of us that are embracing it, are embracing it, and those that are fulfilling it, and those that are fulfilling and embracing, are fulfilling and embracing, those that are betraying, are betraying, and we know ourselves, mm-hmm. you know. Case closed, you know. I think right. that's what I forgot. Even if you go to our generation, it's our duty in this generation to at least not let the touch die in our hands. Mm-hmm. You understand? We as so Africans are children of sacrifice. So many, even though we all want, want to worship a Jesus that died knowing we wake up. We've had hundreds of great Africans who gave their lives, literally gave their lives, and they didn't want to wake up. They gave their lives so you go to school, so you can enter the bus, so you can vote, so you can have a degree, so you can have a job, so you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be anything you want to be in this world. They paid their price. They are, that ladder you are climbing is built with their flesh, blood, and bones. And for us to climb that ladder, get to the top of the fence, and I say, I'm a self-made man, eh, and kick the ladder over so that other Africans can be down looking up at us while we throw crumbs down. Mm-hmm. It's the greatest disservice that we can do to that sacrifice. You know, especially when none of these motherfuckers that are in those positions have anything to do with those that have made the sacrifices that we enjoy today as African people. We are not Europeans, we are not Asians. We are the only group that are not invited to the table for anything. For anything yeah. Nothing. Capitalism and imperialism wanted to subjugate us completely forever in our lands and in their lands. We are given an uh, inferior position. We are never going to be free. Our people freed us. Nobody gave us anything. Mm-hmm. We paid the blood price and we are children of that blood price. No African man in this world can be self made. You know, that has been taken away from you by the imperialists. You are a child of sacrifice, and our duty, when we decide to embrace it, is to pay that sacrifice forward. You know, and the job of our oppressors today is to make sure we forget those sacrifices so we continue to misbehave. <laughs> well, it's been a very, um, very wonderful conversation. So, um, to round up, I'll, I have two um, questions. The first one is if you were to recommend a song of yours to somebody, which one would you recommend? Ah, I don't know. Um, That's just one that um, you African about. Dreams. African Dreams. That's a good song. That's uh, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm proud of all my songs. I don't have songs that I don't, I'm not proud of. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you listen to any other song from my first album. I was too young. But I don't seem to know the story behind it. What's the inspiration? Ah, the okay. One, the most, you know, the, the real serious reason because it's like ancient African warrior hairstyles. Oh, interesting. Is it gotten yeah. from any particular tribe in Africa or? Yes, yeah, so on Yoruba, Shongo worshippers used to cut their hair. The walls, wow. the Ogun, Ogun uh, worshippers, which were the warrior class, okay. basically. Wow. Used to have, some of them used to have this hairstyle. Uh, even in the desert region, some Africans used to have this hairstyle. Uh, but the second and more personal reason, mm-hmm. You so that people see me and they're just too scared to come and talk to me. <laughs> so, if you, you think, so, the hair helps you create that all that. The next one I want to do that, I want to go and do that. If I, when I go and remember, like, I wouldn't know the original one. I wouldn't know the tie for hand, like, do big juju like this. I want the tie for my hand, and I know. Don't let me come like this. Ah, let me be beautiful fast. Oh, 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 it, this has been a wonderful conversation, like I mentioned. Um, I've been I've learned so much listening to you, and so and it's why it's one of the reasons why we wanted to do this because, we, like I said during my introduction, you're one of one of the celebrities that I know that has that technical that knowledge to be able to bless people with your wealth of knowledge. It's not something that is very common. We, you know, we know a couple of them who. Ah, you know, and the question I believe you are my colleagues, and uh, people know things that they know. 
they know they should do more, but they just feel like their careers are more important, more important yeah. than the development of African people. And I, as I said, I don't blame them. We are raised to think that Africa and Africans are not worth it. Worth doing anything you know, it's not worth it. You know, that's not a good reason to do anything. You know, and those people that say it's a good reason, like Fela and Nkuma, these are crazy men, radicals. As we go there, like, it's only in Nigeria you call people that want your nation to be great, a radical. You know, they are an outlier, outcast. You know, like, this should be mainstream core of our society. You know, as I said, our elders are cowards who would rather watch the youth go astray. That's true. You know, because they are afraid of being booed. You know, and also because they are guilty. You know, of the wrong path the youth are on. They don't want to own up to their mistakes or deliberate uh, atrocities. You know, the nation, as I said, African and African people, is not the good enough reason to do that. Anything. You know, and we thank you on behalf of the movement of the people, MOP, you for me on your show. Let me plug in my political movement. You know, in case you want to find out more about what we're doing, you can check us out on uh, mop.org.ng. Uh, it, is, it, is, it, is it like a political party that yeah. people intend to run for offices soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so in terms of it, 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 it should be expected. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, can it MOP a shift from that norm if it of is course. what is the core basis of the ideology that MOP oh, is? MOP, MOP is a Pan Africanist Socialist Party. Party, Socialist. That's, yeah. that's an interesting classification. Yeah. Well, you know, communism, many people mistake socialism for communism. Communism is a European interpretation of socialism. socialism. Socialism has existed for thousands of years before it's the Bolsheviks. Bolshevik. You understand? Yeah. Africa, even when um, Karl Marx said it himself that African society by his inspiration mm-hmm. when he was writing his uh, uh, communist, manifesto. communist manifesto. You know, so uh, I mean, there's a reason why, at least by my age mate, your grandfather is definitely a homeowner. Mm-hmm. And never work for anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we in Africa, we won't have, we were so well organized and content that we had what they call trust markets, where people just let the things they were selling, yes. nobody had to watch it. Nobody had to watch it. Europeans, I'm sure if you tell them about that, they'll be like, are you stupid? Since we become Europeans now, if you say you want to do market and just not be there, you are a stupid person. <laughs> but in Africa, as Africans, it was normal, it was a normal thing to do. You know, but this is because our society were based largely on socialist principles. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, education was socialized. Kids were highly uh, educated. A child knew his environment like the back of his hand. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, everybody knew the law. <laughs> so with MEP, um, are we going to see you run for office in Nigeria? No, 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 no. no. I, I already have a job. <laughs> what we want to do, though, is we um, to train Young people, politicians. They don't have to be young. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not into this demographic politics. Politics, politics of demographic. Talk to you about young people as if it's an ideology. Youth is a demographic. I'm uh, in five years time now. I'm no more. I'm no more a youth. I don't have anything to offer Nigeria again because I'm now 45 and above. That's such nonsense. You know, the issue we have here is not about young people not being this. Actually. The issue in Nigeria is not that young people are being young. As I said, it's all old people too want to be young. Want to be young. Yeah. This is the problem. You have done your twenties. You have done your thirties. Leave the streets <laughs> for the young people. Yeah. Go inside and read a book. Organize. Form unions in your offices. Mm-hmm. Start discussing about your needs. It's now time. No, they are there, leg working with the young people. Ah, in the club, Monday to Sunday with them. In every party with them. In every event with them. Everything they are doing, you are doing. Every club they are wearing, you are wearing. Every uh, trend they are setting, you are joining. What's wrong with you? Grow up. Let the young be young. Grow up. The same thing you've been talking about since high school. Girls, money, car, rap music. You are still discussing it in your 50s. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Are you too afraid? I think they are afraid. Cowards. They don't want to go afraid of growing up. You know, afraid of the young. They're just afraid. Once a Nigerian gets to that 45 age, so it becomes like a headless chicken. No direction. He, he's in the club, he's wearing tight jeans, he's wearing a mother, he's just calm down and grow up. Your wife is angry at you. She's angry. Your children don't really respect you anymore. Eh? They see you coming home drunk every Friday, Sunday, Saturday. Come on. 
grow up. Uh, so young people should be left alone to be young. They are finding themselves, they are trying to know what is good for them. They are, I mean, young. don't put your responsibilities on the young people. Let them be young. Do your job, do your own job. They don't want spoiling allowing like our internet to be slow. <laughs> you need young people that own the internet company that you know, do the work that you don't allow internet to be fast. That is cutting my call every time I call, I have to call three times. Okay. Is it young people that are doing that work? They are not building good roads. Is, it, is that their problem? Is it young people that are not manning the hospitals? And is it because of them that doctors are leaving the country in droves? It's, it's, it's not, it's very so, you know, why, why are we talking about these young people? Yeah. What would we want from them? You, have you built them libraries, youth centers, job centers, community centers, where they can actually do positive things? No. Every street, hotel, and nightclub. This street, two hotel, one nightclub. <laughs> My street. Ah, that one I estimate. It's too much. My former street, four hotel, two nightclub. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. Every corner, hotel, nightclub, hotel. And you complain. Yeah. Did you even put the start? To be on the wet. You see, they have to do. They are learning things. They are seeing the world. They are being young. Why people will give their children no back, no back, back. One year, they leave their house just. Travel everywhere, find themselves in, in their own lives. They will go around their country. Say before I was on the, have you read this the motorcycle diaries? Traveling across South America, that's why I became Che Guevara from the son of a racist doctor to one of the icons of global liberation. Do you know the, do you know how the, if you didn't have that, uh, uh, that exposure, that exposure, that year on that motorcycle. Going across all the communities in this country. How many young people have gone across Nigeria? Can even afford it? If we can even afford it, we save safety. Safety. That's another thing. The roads are not safe. You have to put kidnapping money aside, your phone money. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, okay. Um, thank you very much. Please leave these people alone. They are trying their best. I'm on the side of the youth. I'm on, the, I'm on the side. Leave them alone. Let them be young. If they want to engage in politics, it's a bonus. Please. You know? All right. Come, let's, let's, let's work together. Let's but you adults, you adults, you professionals are both that. You need that 35 upwards. You, 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 you. What are you doing? Me, you are talking about. Eh? So please, please, please. You are there fronting your money on the 20 year old. You need to smash up their babe. <laughs> That's what you are doing. That's why young boys are criminals in Nigeria. I tell you that. When I was growing up, why would you do your boys? Because we will not go now. No man, no man. We don't go drink ice cream. Drink cook, no matter, come your house, now watch TV. No man, no one to do to buy anything like a bag at the age of 20. I didn't experience that. Now I go to designer. But now, you people, living your age, you don't see one young girl, you call the pastoralizer with, with all these other things that her maid cannot buy, and her maid too like her. What do you want to compete? What do you want to do? No, it's not like they pack all the bills. Now, because the person you are to compete with you to retain their property. <laughs> now, when you jump everywhere, you thieves in banks, thieves in oil companies, thieves in government, etc. You are all thieves. Because the person you are going to see, I see you, you never see that day. You are going to never have Muhammad that month. You don't have to do like playing Mago Mago that day for office. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's an interesting angle. That no, 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 no. Let the youth breathe. Free. Let the youth let the youth breathe. Breathe. No, it's B F. Okay, breathe. breathe. Oh, that's <laughs> let the youth breathe. That's that's um that's okay. a very um that's a very good way to to round this up. So, um, Sharon is making an argument for the youth. He's telling the older people to let the youth breathe. 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 <laughs> so I, I, I hope I'm guessing it right. So um, that brings us to the end of the show. This has been a very wonderful conversation. We've learned so much from racism to communism to capitalism, even to skin wiping and even to um, Nigeria and other parts of the world. We've touched on almost everything that we came here to discuss today. And my guest there has been very educated. So my name is Nimika. I'm signing out and I'm saying thank you for being with us on this particular episode. This is the inaugural edition of the show, and trust me, there's no better way to start off a show than having a guest that is this rich in knowledge. Thank you very much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day. Join MP. Join MP. <laughs>